Uh, okay, would you talk to us a little bit about the the catch the wrestling challenges? I knew he wore these trunks, and there's also that crazy story maybe later on. Would you you'd like to add it about the the Glasgow incident? But at first, everyone wants to talk about like when it comes to Maeda and Europe, it's the wrestling challenges that he took on. Uh, also, it's in the book Shocky, I believe it's called. So if if you can talk to us from Maeda's perspective on the wrestling challenges, that would be really great. Because everything is just uh, another source, someone else talking. Mm. So uh, Maeda learned uh, from uh, being in America that there were uh, different ways of wrestling. And uh, a lot of times um, they didn't, They first of all, they counted a win as if you got their sh- your shoulders pinned on the ground. So he learned very early that he had to adapt his, uh, what he was going to, how he was approaching a, a duel and really make sure that the rules were set. You know, how are we actually going to do this duel? So he uh, carried that knowledge over with him to the UK and he was prepared in advance for, you know, some negotiation to take place between how they were going to do these matches. And he, of course, was very much uh, a fan of, you know, judo style. You wear a gi and you do, uh, um, um, and you wrestle. He had to basically admit that um, there was no, there's not going to be any kind of ipon victories. He wasn't going to get a good throw, no matter how great the throw was. That wasn't going to count as a victory in any of his duels. So it was going to be submission either by a choke or by uh, joint locks. So that's how he uh, approached all the uh, uh, duels he entered. And uh, he did occasionally uh, agree to do uh, wrestling rules and stuff like that. And he actually, before a wrestling duel, he actually uh, went and trained with one of the wrestlers he was actually going to duel with later on. So to actually get uh, some experience in Greco-Roman style wrestling and catches catch uh, wrestling. Uh, what? Um, how many challenges has he had? Like you can read, the, you can find it all over the place. Uh, regarding his uh, record, uh, you can see he lost. He both lost that one, which is very normal. But uh, is uh, how do I say? Like any particular incident where it's far more detailed, like which throws he used, uh, how did he approach the fight? You said he wanted to win by, you know, joint locks or uh, strangles. So very much like what you see today in, you know, no gi grappling. But he was doing it early 1900s. So. Uh, is there any detailed fight that was, you know, like the Maruyama book, she says, oh, he threw him with Harai Goshi. He pinned him with Kamishi Hogatame. Is there any detailed fight of any of these incidents? Actually, there's a, a lot of fights and they have a lot of details. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I'm not going to be able to recreate it now from memory, but he does. Uh, um, Maeda was definitely a. Uh, try to get the measure of a, one of the, his opponent by going in with a tomoe nage or some kind of throw like that. And after sort of surprising his opponent with that really quick, you know, tomoe nage, he would then, uh, you know, charge in and try other sort of uh, throws to get the person on the ground. But he, uh, and then as he was throwing the person, look for an opportunity to, to continue that technique into a uh, some kind of joint lock or uh, stranglehold. Usually he seems to have been going for arm bars um, for the most part. Um, part of the reason for that was in the UK, a lot of uh, uh, strangleholds or chokes were kind of frowned upon. I think the, the catch wrestlers kind of had a somewhat, big. right, they had a rule kind of where, where we don't do the chokes. And I think they had some other some other locks that uh, they weren't going to use. Um, I can't think of what they were but right now, but uh, maybe it was the full Nelson they wouldn't use as well. So they had a couple things they weren't going to do. So Maida kind of had, uh, his approach was to charge in with some big throws and then try to transition those throws into a joint lock and then get the guy to submit with that. Um, whereas, in judo, the throw itself, the fact that he executed a perfect, you know, tomoe nage or harai goshi, or uh, he also liked uh, uh, tsurikomi, tsurikomi nage uh, or tsurikomi otoshi. Tsurikomi liked, goshi? Yeah, yeah. He really liked that to uh, attack with that. I think that really uh, confused his opponents. 
He also mentions that he would go in with a different grab than normal, uh, the kumi. He would go in with a uh, a left kumi instead of a right kumi, which apparently was uh, a lot of the wrestlers in the UK were not used to that. So he was left-handed. Yeah, so apparently uh, it was it it sort of uh, confused the other wrestler uh, the mm. uh, the wrestlers in the UK because a lot of them did have experience uh, wrestling, you know, Japanese style mm. judo uh, wrestlers. So they, mm. you know, they weren't completely freaked out or anything like that by it, like uh, the techniques that were being thrown at them. However, since Maeda was coming from the opposite direction. Um, he got some. He definitely got uh, racked up some victories there in the early stages of his time in the UK. Those uh, challenges or fights were they in the jacket? As far as I know, they were wearing a dogi. Sometimes, when uh, even if he agreed to a duel where the opponent didn't have to wear one, he would still wear one. So that was kind of an interesting uh, element. Yeah. He. Uh, he in, like in America, he did do a few uh, uh, what do you call it? duels where it was one round in Western style wrestling with you know no gi, one round in judo style wrestling with a gi, and whoever won, you know, uh, or sorry, whoever defeated the other person in the fastest amount of time got to choose the manner of the third bout. So like so uh, you know I wrestle you Greco Roman style and pin you in ten minutes you wrestle me judo style pin me in eight minutes so we each it's one and one you get to pick the the style of wrestling for the third round and you're gonna clearly pick judo and so that's gonna put you advantage for uh, two of the three matches. Oh that's pretty cool. There's just so much so many ways you can go about about rules and mm. also let's not forget that. Uh, Maeda wanted to be a rikishi or sumo wrestler. Yeah, yeah. So being naked and wrestling for him is not uh, strange or something that's out of his element because he did that a little bit before, I believe. He went mm -hmm. into the Kodokan and uh, later went on with Tomita. Right, right. So it's Tomoe Nake and Jujigatame. Gatame. It's a very classic yet a very functional combo. I believe Tsunoda now, her name is, she won a few titles, world titles, like like back to back, just using mm -hmm. that very basic combo and it still works. Mm. I think just charging in straight in a person and like, you know, dropping down, you know, kind of yeah. out of sight. And then all of a sudden the person's getting thrown, you know, hit over mm -hmm. heels really like, you know, could be disorienting for, uh, you know, a lot of those wrestlers. Yeah. And also back then, and now you see it a lot, a lot less, but sooner that does the very classical one, it's, Tomo and Nage back at at, the, at his time, and if you see in the Nage no Kata, and you see uh, even today's Kodokan demonstration, they shoot with the leg that's on the side of the one that holds the lapel. Now it's on the side of the sleeve because many go for Yoko Tomo Nage. And Yoko Tomo Nage, you need to have like that steering wheel effect. So you mm -hmm. obviously use the, the sleeve because it's a, it's a, what do you call it? Uh, like the momentum and the, the right, way right. you rotate it, it's far bigger. And so when the leg that goes on for Tomoe Nage, it's usually on the sleeve side. So mm. when you're rotating and you're going to the side, you can spin out of it. You can cartwheel. There's a lot. But the classical one, even now when like the veterans hit me with it I, and you're just like hosted up in the air, all of a sudden your feet have lost contact. It's uh, very hard to to resist or try to do something at the last second. Mm. But uh, it was a lot of a surprise attack back then. Uh, if you see it in the Nage no Kata, he pushes him, and as he's kneeling forward, he grabs the double lapel, mm. then goes underneath and shoots up. It's hard to counter such a thing. So yeah. uh, I would not be surprised if that was his uh, bread and butter, so to speak. Mm. That being said, the matches, uh, when he uh, describes the matches, you know, he describes kind of some of the opening moves and then some kind of the moves at, towards the end. But uh, a lot of them last about, you know, 10 minutes or 12 minutes or something along that, those lines. So there were long matches, definitely. So there was a lot that had happened in between before he did finally get the uh, the victory in whatever uh, bout he was in. So uh, other than Surikomi Goshi and Tawanage, is there any, do you have any recollection of other throws? Because what I'm trying to do, and I'm sure others are doing, is 
uh, you try to see what his favorite throw because every judoka has those mm. three to four throws, um, sometimes even just two, and you try to see like oh, it's kind of like a like a game where like oh, mm. these are his attacks. So mm. if you can recollect maybe a third throw that would be really oh, he good. definitely does a uh, he's a guruma. Mm. And uh, uh, Koshi, uh, Koshi Otoshi, Koshi Otoshi, Koshi Harai, huh? Harai Goshi. Harai Goshi, yeah. They sometimes use slightly different names for the uh, throws. Mm. So, sure. Uh, uh, there's like an older older name for it, but I think, it, yeah, Harai Goshi, I think that's what it is. Harai Goshi and then Hisa Guruma. Hisa Guruma to one, I guess. Uh, to Goshi. It's a weird mix of throws. Like even, like, Today you see a lot of Serai Nage, Ushimata, and Osoto and Ouchigari. Mm. And if you can catch a, a Deashi Harai or a Kouchigari, you know you're, you're you're a king because these are throws that so minimal yet you know you need the right timing to catch them. But it's usually the big throws like uh, uh, Serai Nage, a lot of variations of it. Ushimata, same thing, um, and Ouchigari, you know hooks and Osoto Gari from outside, but. Uh, back then, I noticed they have like a, a far more classical arsenal. You see a lot of Hanegoshi, you mm. see a lot of Tomoinage. Tomoinage is still big even today, but it's mm. they approach it very differently with the way the gripping is being done today. Mm. Um, but yeah, like Kano, for example, Ukigoshi, uh, Ukiwaza, and Tomoinage, and Kataguruma. It, it, it's a weird mix. Yeah, Tsuri, now, the Tsuri, uh, Tsuri Komi Goshi too, you know, like hoisting the guy up and then uh, throwing him down. That was a popular one. I was wondering if maybe he was, he wanted like a the bigger style throws, like I guess he's Hizaguruma's not really that big, but, uh, you know, to extend the guy's arm out, you know, so that he could then get a, an arm bar because he's trying to transition to either a choke. But like, oh, he also did Tai Otoshi as well. Tai Otoshi was big as too. Okay. To drop down on top of the guy and then, Kind of do ground ground fighting from there. If it was okay to, um, yeah, you know, not get your shoulders on the ground. So there's stuff like that happening as well. Tadatoshi puts you puts them aligned like right in front of you like this. And if he's holding the the sleeve or the arm, it, it's just easy to go for Juju Gatana. Yeah, Juju Gatana, and then uh, was it Juju uh, Gatame? Is that what it is? Juju Gatame. Yeah, uh, Udeshigi. Yeah, it's things like that is what he was doing from uh, Tai Otoshi. Mm. The, the, the first one, the Tatsushin Ryu book that you, the first thing that you sent to me was uh, mm. where the you, the Rando reception, you can see Mata Harai was also Togari. Mm. Uh, Ude Shigi was uh, Jujitame, I believe. Right. I, I, I forgot. Maybe I, I might be mistaken, but there's also Dojime. But yeah, the, the naming was definitely different. Even... If you go to Mifune's uh, videos, it has a few, like outside of the Gokyo, but you know, with different names. For example, Skuinage Teguruma. It's from him that we call it Teguruma, I believe now. Right. Uh, under Kodokan naming, it's uh, Sukuinage, you know, scooping up. Uh, yeah. When he went to Scotland, you told me there's a funny story before he left, they they, they presented him with, uh, with a little gift. Yeah, yeah, so... Uh... One of the things is Maeda was invited up to Scotland, to Glasgow, and so we took the train from London to Glasgow, and uh, uh, Glasgow, and uh, it was a week-long seminar. And as far as I can tell, he actually there was a group of students there studying judo, very serious. So they they heard they were very excited to have a you know world famous uh, judo practitioner in town or in town in country. So they invited him up for a uh, seminar for a week. So. I presume they paid for his transportation and hotel and stuff like that. And while he was up in Glasgow, uh, he would also had some duels with some local, uh, uh, what do you call it? Local champions or not even necessarily judo people, but other uh, people that wrestled or just tough guys. So uh, in the middle of this week, uh, he, uh, he gets a knock at his hotel room door, opens up and it's like the bus boy or the bellhop with a case of uh scotch whiskey and uh one of his students is uh it, it taking the seminar is the son of a distillery owner and just gives him a whole case of this top quality uh you know whiskey 
And Midas like, look, I can't take this. And talks to the guy finally. I can't take this. I can't accept this gift because it's going to tempt me too much to drink. And the guy's like, yeah, don't worry about it. You'll be fine. The last Japanese guy that was here teaching us uh, drank the whole case in a week. And we even sent him six bottles as a, a departing gift for him to drink on the train ride home, which I think was only like a day and a half. So, oh. so the guy was a big drinker. So Maeda then asked, asked like, hey, who, who is this Japanese guy that was like drinking all this alcohol? And uh, they're like, and the guy replies, uh, I can't remember his name, which is like, it's yeah. like, okay. And he's like, well, can you tell me more about him? He's like, yeah, he drank all that whiskey. Uh, we trained hard and uh, he was out with some of the uh, guys. And in addition to drinking at the bar, uh, this is presumably in addition to the whiskey that he had up sent up to his hotel room. He also pulled out a bottle of ether and had everybody like breathe in the vapors of that to, you know, really get the party yeah. going. And based on yeah. that description, Maeda was able to determine that that was uh, Ono Sandan, you know, the uh, the guy that, uh, uh, the uh, third degree black belt from the Kodokan. His name so is Akitaro ono. ono. Yeah, that's him, that's him, that's him. He was a big guy, if you see his pictures. Yeah. So but he, he has no neck. Exactly, exactly. And I think he was with, he's with, uh, uh, Maeda all the way down through Cuba and stuff like that. I think I saw a picture yeah, of him. Satake, Maeda, uh, uh, Tomita, and uh, Ono. Right, right. There's so they're Ono. all, you know, they, they came over to America. They were kind of like, they were in America, they were together a little and apart a little. And then Ono went to the UK ahead of, uh, of Maeda. And uh, apparently they end up <laughs> in Cuba together. So... Ono's this, you know, humongous, hard drinking, uh, you know, hard training uh, judoka that is uh, apparently going to be in and out of this story for uh, the next uh, five or ten years. <laughs>